Hello and welcome to Friday's Masterclass edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I get to do just that. Once a week, I try to ta uh, tackle the Times Cryptic crossword live. Friday is a good day to try because it's normally the hardest day of the week, um, as indeed this one is the unofficial rating of the Times crossword, which you can find if you type Times crossword snitch into your search search engine, it will take you to a site um, where basically it rates every Times crossword uh, according to difficulty. And um, this one is the hardest for several weeks. Um, let's click um, stats. Here we go. So, okay, so there are three solvers names there that I, I know are genuine solvers rather than people who solve in advance. And, um, and then type in the answers. Yes, people do that, believe it or not. Moan is real. John McCabe, six minutes, 19. Uh, Jason James, seven minutes, 24. And this, Magoo, is our own Mark. Um, and I can, I, actually, I am, Mark has recorded that solve. Uh, I don't think there's any commentary. It's just Mark racing on, on the puzzle. Um, and we're going to put that on Patreon today. So if you if if you watch me steadily plow my way through the puzzle, and you want something a bit more uh, gung ho, uh, you can check that video out. Uh, I'll try and remember to put a link on the screen for where you can find it. Uh, now, anyway, with that, let's get cracking. I'll try and talk you through my thought processes as we go. It's the Times crossword, not the quick cryptic. So let's get cracking. And it's in the right place, I think, on the screen. So, band bringing fuel meeting downtown. Downtown, isn't that normally one word? Meeting downtown. I don't know. Uh, that's, that's, that's the thing that's occurring to me there. It probably won't help solve the clue. Uh, and sorry, I have got my window open today. I'm hoping spring has continued to be sprung. Uh, and there's a bit of bird noise, but it's actually quite nice weather. Beckett, sorry, I've just seen nine across. Beckettian State. What? As a reference to Samuel Beckett, is it? I. That's a terrifying clue. That is an absolutely terrifying clue. If I have to know details about Samuel Beckett's work to solve that clue, that's probably going to go badly. Um, I haven't got a clue about one across. Let's have a look at one down. Part of London Bridge. Well, I used to walk over London Bridge very regularly on my way to work. Um, part of London Bridge couple are inclined to traverse slowly at first. Hmm. Okay. I don't know what this is yet, but I, I can tell you how I'm reading the clue, which I think might help. And actually, it's quite, it's quite an instructive clue from the perspective of it's very hard for me especially because I London Bridge is something I'm so familiar with to read this to read the phrase London Bridge as anything other than London Bridge but I think here we probably have to because what about if we split the clue after the word London then it's possible the definition could be part of London something like West End East End or something like that and then bridge couple well if in the game of bridge pairs are north south and east and west so i'm wondering well west end then maybe tend yes that's a lovely clue so part of london bridge couple are inclined part of london bridge couple are inclined to traverse slowly at first we break it as part of london which is going to be west end bridge couple west and east are inclined to tend and tend well we and tend traverse they they cross if you like they're outside slowly at first well that's the first letter of the word slowly so that gives us west end and that's at least a start so let's go back to one across um band bringing fuel meeting downtown watford <laughs> it's a town <laughs> um Band bringing fuel. Meeting down. I mean, down, I wonder, we don't often see this in cryptic crosswords, but I think it's legitimate for D to, D to be an abbreviation for down. I don't think we'll find it in chambers from memory. Let's just go and have a look. Um, 
I'm not expecting it to be there, but I'm not ruling it out as possible because uh, it's not there, is it? Uh, or is it? Hang on. I don't think it's going to be there. Um, so, but if we were to write one down as one D, nobody would really bat an eyelid at that. And a meeting down would, would suggest maybe we're putting a D at the end. Bringing fuel. Band bringing fuel. Ah. I, mean, I keep thinking of Watford. I must stop thinking about Watford. I'm sure it's not Watford. Uh, let's try nine across. Oh no, that's the Beckettian state. I have no idea what that is getting at. That's an intriguing clue. Eight down. Bishop to carry on with. Book. John. In anger. There's a lot going on there. Bishop is very typically either the letter B, and that's from chess notation, or RR for Right Reverend, which I think is the correct form of address. If you meet a bishop, you, you're meant to call them the Right Reverend. Um, the things you learn from crosswords. I got the right classes on, yes. Uh, bishop to carry. To carry on with is to wage with book. John. John could be a lavatory, like a loo or, or a lav. In anger. Bad blood? Oh, I quite like that. I'm just going to put that in and have a look. I can see elements of the word play appearing there. Bishop B. To carry on with. Carry on with to add or something. It's something like add around B. Lou for book John. I th yeah, I think the way you're meant to read this, this is very difficult. I think the way you're meant to read it is B is bishop. To carry on is to add. And then that word carry on has, well, it then says with book John, which is B. Lou in. So you're meant to put B. Lou in the word that means to carry on. And that, that, that gives us bad blood, which means, of course, anger. That's not easy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Assam. That's a state in India. Sam, as Sam, okay, Samuel Beckett. So I think, I mean, this deserves its question mark. <laughs> I mean, literally, Beckettian is saying, if something is of Beckett, it might be described as as Sam. Yeah, that's tricky. Um, but as Sam, of course, famous for its tea. Um, let's try, should we try? No, we should probably try one of the ones with um, a starting letter. So bank maybe on second rate kitchen. Oh, blender. Yeah. Okay. So a bank maybe. Uh, what what does the institution of a bank perform? The the, the tasks of it. it. It allows people to save and it allows and it and it provides lending. So bank, for example, is a lender. And we put that on second rate. If something is second rate, it would be described as. It might you might get a B in an exam. That would be the second rate or second grade you could get. So if something first rate would be A. Something second rate B. B lender. It's a kitchen appliance. A blender. Right now, what's what's the start here? Odds. Ah. I don't know. Let's have a look. Oh, quaint translation. It's probably oldy, worldy, or something. I think it is that translation of is saying anagram the letters Orwell, odd, and E for English. And I think if something is old, oldy, worldy, I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's that's sort of how I would attempt it. And that looks like it's got approximately the right anagram fodder. So what's this? Uh, come down or something? Leave 
yeah okay if you leave college i don't know if this is an english thing but when you go to university you're described as going up to university which i always found very strange i always you know when i went to university i was living in the south and i did go north so i thought you know it made this 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 bit of sense but if i'd gone to university in the south you know south of where i lived why would i have been going up but anyway th th that is what it means and therefore if you get sent down from university you're you're you know you're expelled i suppose so leave university i think is saying come down and a come down is a disappointment so watford is wrong um Band bringing fuel. I don't know. Um, meeting downtown. That's a really odd. It's really odd. Let's try three down. Composer or storyteller with what to replace one? Right. Oh. Oh, I thought this is the danger of when I open the window is when the wasps and the hornets fly in. No, I think it's flown out again. I have got this one. Um, this is a strange one. So as usual, in almost all of these clues, our, our task will be to work out what the definition is. And the definition will almost always be at the start or the end of the clue. So let's read this clue again. Composer or storyteller with what to replace one. Now, if you read the end of that clue with what to replace one, it's very hard to pick out a, a natural sounding definition there. I mean, one question mark, could that be a definition? It doesn't feel right to me. And when we look at words like replace, anything to do with the positioning of letters or the switching of letters or the uh, anything like that is much more redolent of wordplay. So I think what we're looking for here is a composer. Now, a composer, we have to be careful. It could be somebody who composes music. It could be somebody who composes themselves, who is able to calm themselves down, or somebody who is able to calm down somebody else, like, a, I don't know, a horse whisperer or something. But what's the most natural meaning? Well, it's going to be the name of a musical composer. So then we could think of Elgar. But it's not Elgar. The other one that comes up occasionally, and the way, the way I got to this, by the way, is I read, with what to replace one? I was thinking about that in terms of what that could mean from a wordplay perspective. Do I know any words that mean what? And perhaps this is because I do too many crosswords. But if, if somebody says something to you, you don't hear them, you go, what? You, uh, another way would be a E-H. <laughs> E-H is what I thought. And E-H replacing one. Well, I didn't really have to think about the replacing one. I had to think about, do I know any composers that have E and H in them at this point of the puzzle? And I do. Lehar. Is that Franz Lehar? I think so. Um, but um, And then then it's just a case of well, how does this work? Well, a storyteller is, some, is a liar. L-I-A-R. And if that has E-H, what, replacing its I, one, the Roman numeral, we get Lehar. Um, which is a composer, who was a composer. Um, so Wicklow, Wicklow is a town, and that's got something to do with fuel, of candle. Band bringing fuel, meeting down. If you're down, you're low. Why is it? Hmm. I like Wicklow as an answer because it, well, primarily because it fits and it ends in low, which does mean down. And Wick band, I mean, is a band okay? I wouldn't have said a Wick was a band. I can see how I think of a, a candle wick as a string. Is that the same as, a, it's not the same as a band, but maybe there is, a, maybe it, I don't know, but I can see how a candle, you know, the wick that goes through a candle does bring fuel, doesn't it? It brings the candle wax up to the top. So band bringing, you know, if it was string bringing fuel, I could certainly see that. As, I think Wicklow must be right. I must just misunderstand quite what a wick is. Um, 
And what do we get for four down wife? Well, that, that's going to be W. W is a valid abbreviation for wife. Remember, <laughs> in fact, I'm going to gain say something I said earlier, but with very, very, very few exceptions. And in fact, down was not an exception, was it? Because I, I didn't manage to have a D in one across to represent the word down. Basically, abbreviations have to be supported by the dictionary. So if we go to W, we will find wife as one of the... Uh, we will, we will somewhere. I know it's here somewhere, there it is, wife. So the word wife can be abbreviated to W. So that's probably what this W is. One's enticed to follow British sports tournament. Wimbledon. Uh, it must be Wimbledon. I haven't quite worked out why it's Wimbledon, but I like the idea that it's Wimbledon. Um, look how many W's we've got in the grid already as well. Lots. Um, one's enticed. One's led on. I'm led on to... Fo okay, very nice. Right. One's is I'm. I apostrophe M. Enticed is led on to follow British. So that's this B for British. And so it's not British sports tournament. That's the definition. It's actually just sports tournament, which of course is Wimbledon, the tennis tournament. And now we might be able to get 10 across. Hospital doctor after a oh, hamburger. Okay. So the way I've got this, I mean, primarily it's because I've got these checking letters, but Having a good knowledge of all of the various abbreviations for the word doctor, that is very helpful. Now, let's list some of them. MO, medical officer, comes up. MB, which is, I don't even know what MB stands for. Medical, is it medical bachelor? Let's look it up. I don't know. But MB can be in there, and that's what's being used here. Uh, MB, um, mark of the beast. Bachelor of medicine, MB, there we go. Um, GP, DR, so there's, there's four immediately without giving it much thought. So what do we got? We've got hospital, that's H, doctor, that's MB, after A, well, so we've got to put the MB after the letter A, to drive is to urge, uh, oh, driver is an, uh, no, okay, driver, sorry, Driver is, is an urger. Somebody who drives somebody to do something is an urger. And that brings food, which is hamburger. Um, right, do we go for... Let's, I'm going to keep working on the start. Let's try that one. Starting letters. Rests, hugging, little child. Or no little one, perhaps. Hmm. Right. I've got an answer. I've got an answer for this. And I'm not good enough at grammar to know whether this is correct, but it's certainly what I would enter. It'd be interesting to see if Mark just writes this in in his in his quick run through. Um, but the way I've got this is from the wordplay. So and let's let's let me break down how I was able to get it. So Firstly, we've got the word rests. It's got a capital letter, so it's making me think, oh, this could be the definition here. But then, then there's the word hugging. Now, in a cryptic crossword clue, what can the word hugging possibly mean other than surrounding? So it's an indicating, it's a word indicating position. So it's almost certainly wordplay, especially as it's in the middle of the clue. So it's sort of forcing you to read the clue as find a word for rests, and that's going to hug, it's going to surround a short synonym for a little child. Well, there's one synonym for a little child that's short, that comes up all the time, and that's tot. And then I need a four-letter word which means rests. Well, I thought of the word lies. If you're lying down, you're resting. And I can, I do know the word, litotes, which I think is a literary understatement normally comes up with T.S. Eliot is, I think, an anagram of litotes. <laughs> and so it's often used in that context. In a, but no little one, P 
perhaps I think I think what's being said here is that if you said somebody was no little one, you'd be you'd be actually describing them as abnormally large, wouldn't you? So you'd say that oh, I caught a fish; it was no little one. You'd be saying it was a massive fish. So it's 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 a form of understatement. So I, I'm sure this is the right answer. I'm just not good enough at knowing whether no little one is a perfect example of understatement. So I'm not going to change this answer. Let's just look at litotes and see. Um, oh gosh, whatever that word is, meiosis or understatement, especially affirmation by negation of the contrary. Not a little angry. Okay, so, no, so it's actually got an example there, which is very helpful. So it, it is. So no little one is is I can see doing exactly what it's meant to do. So litotes is going to be the answer. Um, don't beat yourself up if you didn't get that. It's a very crossword word. Let's try. Let's keep going with these starting letters. Intelligence exercise. Well, I don't know what this is yet, but. When you get these two word clues, it's very, it's very, very often just a double definition. Unless there's a question mark or something that is going to be a double definition. So we need a word that means intelligence and a word that means exercise. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's what we need. Um, intelligence, not showing much intelligence here, Simon. Uh, intelligence. Oh, come on. Oh, well, I mean, this is, this is going to annoy me because I know that Mark will just write that in. That will be a write-in for Mark. But those few, few or potentially lot of moments that I spend mulling it over are just not helping. All right, let's try it. Uh, yeah, no, no, we've got that one. Rio Grande, I'm going to guess. No. Encounter urgent demand. Urgent demand is a red letter, is it? A sign of the times. No. Okay. Run across is what I like here. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just I'm just thinking about urgent demand, and I really like a, cr a cross as the end here. A being this word A, and a sign of the times. Well, if you were doing a multiplication sum, you would write a cross, wouldn't you, to indicate that? So a sign of the times, a sign of the multiplication, would be a cross. So I really like that ending in a cross. And if I encounter something, I run across it. And that suggests all I've got to be able to do is to say a run is synonymous with an urgent demand. Oh, yeah, OK, if, you, if there's a run on a bank, that would be an urgent demand. Yeah, OK, fine. So that is run across. OK, good. Um, let's try. All right, we're going to have to go for, I think, five down or five across. Should we try five across first? Way to get batter out. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? If we read the whole clue way to get batter out of some fish. It's trying to suggest uh, the sort of fish and chip shop, you know, you've got, <laughs> you've got, um, sorry, fish and chip shop is something that makes me smile. I have a friend who tells an anecdote about playing in an old golf tournament, who was playing for old schools. And they were playing against somebody who went to Eton. And uh, they said the name of their school and he, the other guy said, oh, I, you know, I went to Eton. And then afterwards in the bar, they were talking about the match and somebody else came over and said, oh, how did you get on? Who, which school were you playing? And this guy from Eton just went, oh, some fish and chip shop school. <laughs> it's that awful. <laughs> anyway, 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 we move swiftly on. Way to get batter out of some fish. So, yeah, it's trying to make you think about fish and chips and you know battered fish but but if we stop and wait to get batter out well that's got a completely different meaning a batter is somebody who's batting in in a game like cricket or rounders or baseball so a way to get a batter out is to bowl them stump them way to get batter out 
of some fish. Catch. Yeah, okay. That word of. Hmm. Yeah. I don't love it. Because I think some fish, you know, would be the catch, wouldn't it? The, what, what the fisherman caught that day would be some fish or might be described as the catch, the catch of the day. Of some fish. Does catch mean of some fish? No. So that of is being used as a link word in the clue. It's saying that we can extract a word that means a way to get a batter out, which is to catch them out, from a phrase that means some fish. And it's, it's probably okay, actually. But I know some people wouldn't like that. But especially as there's no there's no adjustment being made to the phrase that means some fish you, it's not really out of this process that we apply to to the following words that we are able to extract a word that means way to to get batter out it's literally a synonym so I, i'm i'm not sure whether i love that but anyway five down our wrecks up for this show primarily. Our wrecks. That's going to, as well, could that be Charles, King Charles, which would be CR. Up for this show primarily. Crufts. Right. It's, it's, I think it's Crufts. I haven't worked out quite why, but Crufts is. Obviously, the, well, I think, is it the most famous dog show? Certainly in England, it's the most famous dog show. I don't know if it is, might be the most famous in the world. I don't know. Um, oh, it's just start. Okay. U-F-T-S. Right. Okay. Now I understand. Right. So I like that. I like this clue very much. Unlike, unlike Catch, I really like this one. <laughs> so, our Rex is doing two things in this clue. Well, hmm. well, okay. Let's talk about what sort of clue this is. Now, all the way through, I've been talking about clues as being splittable into a definition part and a wordplay part, with the definition almost always being at the start or the end. This is one of the few very rare examples of a clue that doesn't meet that structure. So this is called an andlet clue, where the whole clue acts as the definition of the answer and the whole clue acts as the wordplay as well. Now, so the definition is literally Rx up for this show primarily, where the implication is that Rex is a classical dog's name. So Rx would be up for this, this type of dog show. And the answer is therefore Crufts. But the wordplay our Rex is referring not to a dog's name, but it's referring to Rex as in the Latin word for a king. And our king is Charles, King Charles, uh, whose abbreviation is CR, Charles Rex. So CR is how the wordplay breaks down. And then up for this show primarily, if we take the primary letters of up for this and show, we get U, F, T and S, and that gives us craft. So nice clue, nice clue. Okay, is this going to be tighten? <laughs> yes. So if you tense something, you tighten it. And gent hit out. Well, if we if we anagram gent and hit, we put those letters out of the order they're in, we get tighten. So that must be right. And then what have we got here? Bucks. A different county we understand. Is that hearts? Oh, actually, no, it's A, isn't it? Oh, this letter is a nasty one. This letter is a nasty one. Okay. I would go for this, I think. So, that's a very clever clue, actually, again. 
Hmm. Why am I why am I um pausing here? Well, it's a clue that you've got to be very, very sure that it isn't that. Now hearts is in Hertfordshire would be that spelling. So Bucks is Buckinghamshire. So Bucks, a different county we understand. Well, that would suggest we're looking for hearts, H-E-R-T-S. But what what's we understand doing in this clue? And I think it's indicating that the answer is a homophone. Now, what's another meaning of the word bucks, apart from if we're not thought, thinking about counties? Well, it's deer, isn't it? And a type of deer is a heart, H-A-R-T-S. Is a heart a young deer? I'm not even sure I know that for sure. I'm suddenly wondering if I've got the sexes of the deers wrong. <laughs> um, but, but if bucks could be a valid bucks question mark as well, it might be because hearts are a young deer and bucks are a male deer. So heart might be an example of a buck if it was a male young deer, if you see what I mean. <laughs> it's quite a lot going on in this. But anyway, so let's say hearts, H-A-R-T-S, was a synonym of bucks, as in the deer sense of it. Then a different county we understand would be saying, find a different county from Buckinghamshire, hearts, H-E-R-T-S, and that has exactly the same pronunciation as hearts the deer. Um, but we're looking, what we're looking for here is the synonym for bucks, as in the deer, not the county. That is how I read the clue. So I would enter HRTS. Uh, now, having said I'm going to enter that, and I am, um, let us just check what, what a buck is in terms of, it's a male deer. Okay, so is a heart a young deer? Have I got this wrong? Now a heart will be a female deer and I'll feel like a, no, it, oh, okay, it is. It's a male deer, especially one over five years old. Okay, so it's very, I think it's about fine. I think it's fine. Um, that's a really clever clue. Um, let's try 15 across. Answer understood, read out again. Answer understood, read out again. A new, right, okay. Okay, so having just looked at a homophone, we've now got another one. So answer understood, read out again. Probably be very good if you're new to cryptic crosswords to just pause. I mean, the answer's written in and see if you can work out why that's the answer. Let me explain. So answer a Q and A would be a question and answer session. So answer can be A, that's this A here. Understood, if you understood something, you knew it, K-N-E-W. And if that word knew, K-N-E-W, was read out, it would sound exactly the same as N-E-W, knew. So what this is saying is we want a word that means understood, knew, with a K, read out, so spell it differently. I'll spell it like this then. A new means again, as in a new. Um, so tricky. This whole thing, this whole puzzle is tricky. Um, but we have got a, a, another W. We've got another W. In uh, it looks like it looks like the constructor has been trying to put a lot of Ws in. Credulous, on hearing excuse for being late. Credulous that means sort of believing, doesn't it? On hearing. Hearing again could be a homophone indicator. Excuse for being late. We... I can't fit the dog ate my homework into, into this eight word answer, eight letter answer. I don't know what this is. Let's try that one. Um, without planning, un... Don't know, due for shake up. That seems like an anagram of due. Games company caught short. Nintendo? Unintended? 
I like that. I like unintended. Um, yeah. Okay. So I've now I've now understood. I, I was I was I felt like Nintendo was in that word somewhere, but I, I was trying to put it in the wrong place. But there we go. Nintend. Um, is the, so Nintendo is the games company. That's caught short. That gives us Nintend. Um, and that that is is caught. So it is surrounded by an anagram of Jew because Jew is shaken up. So we've got a short Nintendo caught by an anagram of Jew. Unintended means without planning. So what's this then? Credulous wide-eyed? Ah, yeah, okay. So it is a homophone. Um, so if you're credulous, I think you're wide-eyed. You're sort of a bit naive, aren't you? Uh, and if you hear, <laughs> hear an excuse for being late, it doesn't mean being late as in being tardy. It means as in being dead. So why did you die? Why died? <laughs> uh, it sounds exactly the same as wide-eyed. Um, very nice. Uh, I've got up. We've had a lot of homophones suddenly. Let's try twenty-one down. Old archbishops demands for payments. For demands for payment with thank you note. Well, I have got this primarily because one of my great friends went to a school called Saint Dunstan's. Um. And I guess that, I didn't know, but I guess that was probably named after an old archbishop. It's certainly plausible. I do know duns as an old word. A dun is an, a demand for payment in some old English way. And then thank you note. Well, that was the way I got this. Thank you is tar. A note can be, or it can be a musical note. It can also just be the letter N as an abbreviation. And that would give us Dunstan which must be the answer. So let's just, uh, we'll look it up at the end, but I'm sure we'll find Duns are demands for payment. I think old, it's an old word. Now look, we've got this one, special fabric satin, apparently so tight fitting. Oh, uh, fabric apparently so tight fitting. It's going to be something like slip on or um, I'm not very good at fabrics that are tight fitting. I mean, obviously, I am something of a fashion icon. Uh, you have no idea how much hilarity that will cause by anyone who actually knows me in real life. Um, yeah, I am the world's least fashionable man probably fair to say. Let's try this one. For Louis, I. Okay. All right. I don't know the answer to this, but actually the way I've read the clue is very helpful there <laughs> because probably if you're not used to reading cryptic crossword clues, you would see Louis I as Louis the first, as in the King of France. But where when I read for Louis I, I'm thinking of for Louis as in a French person, what would the word for I be? And it would be je. So I really like the idea. This part starts with je. I haven't got any further than that. Um, okay, now I have. So for Louis, I is je. A is literally a. If something is bad, it is lousy. And if I put that together, I get jealousy, which is a bad feeling. So there we go. Oh, so what's this then? Spray on. Rayon. Ah, very good. Okay. So special can be abbreviated to SP. A fabric is rayon. Um, and if something was apparently so tight fitting, it would be spray on. I don't know. Do you actually get spray on fabrics? Surely not. I don't know. What's this untie? A couple has it in reverse. Uh, yeah. Okay. If you. Yeah, I can see sort of what's going on here. If you couple two things together, you would unite them. And if the it in the word unite was reversed, you would get the word untie. And I think the idea here is that this is some sort of and lit. If you untie... 
you reverse it. I'm not, sure, I'm not quite sure how I'm meant to read the definition there, but I'm sure that's right. Unite with its it reversed is, is to untie. And maybe there's a sense in which this, this phrase means, you know, to, overall means to untie. It's not, I don't think that's quite as brilliant as some of the others. Let's try 24. Boundless glee. That's the, well, I'll tell you what I'm thinking here. I'm thinking if I treat the word glee as having no bounds, it wouldn't have a start or an end. So that might be L-E. Inside, following, gag. Si if you silence, you gag somebody. Since. Yeah, yes. Okay, I quite like that. I think that's fine. So I think the way this works is it is boundless glee. So it's L-E. That's this L-E because that's inside a word that means following. And since can mean, you know, in a sort of logical sense, it follows that since that. So I think, and then silence to gag feels right, doesn't it? So, right, let's look at this one. Ultimately this, well, I'm thinking that's the ultimate letter in the word this, that would be S. Display oh, shows promise, wear. If you wear clothes, you display them and swear is to promise. So we've sort of worked our way around this um, southwestern part of the grid. Now, where should we go? Let's try the one ending in C. I've got to get this letter to help me with the intelligence one. Um, actually, let's just go back to the intelligence one quickly. I hate leaving these behind. Exercise. Press up. Um, if you exercise, you... I don't know, I'm, I'm wondering if whether there's words like doit, D-O-I-T, that rings the vaguest of memories. But no, okay, let's try this, 23. Still bitter, maybe, writer after months. Well, this is alembic, isn't it? I do not know how I know that that's alembic, but I just, my brain is shouting alembic at me, and I can see it's right now. But I don't, I don't know how that's a writing for me, but it just is a still um, as in something that distills, I think is an alembic. A, let me write that down. And then bitter is an example of ale. A writer is in a bic pen, B-I-C, goes after M for months. So alembic is the answer. We'll look at that this at the end. And I, I apologize to everybody who says that's a ludicrous one to just write in, but I... I can't explain it. I've just, I've seen something like that before, obviously in the annals of my memory and they've just helped me for once. 22 down. Get on a bit with work. Get on a bit. Age with work. Get on a bit. Get on, get on. Bored. bit with work. Nah, nice. Okay, no. So here, the crucial thing to solve this clue is to split it in the, in correct, in the correct way. And it is, you can see how I'm reading the clue. I'm going, get on a bit. Get, I'm, I'm not doing it correctly. I have to split it after the word get. And if I do that, the clue becomes easy. On a bit with work is saying work at the letters of on a bit, anagram them. And if I anagram them, I can get obtain, and to obtain something is to get it. So again, it's just, can I split the clue? Right, what's this one? Superior, a bit above, keen, to welcome sailor, round five. I think, I think it is a bit above, but I'm going to put it in and try and justify it. So, sailor round five is AB for able seaman. O for something round. I know it's ludicrous, but that is something that comes up in the times from t time to time. And V is the Roman numeral for the number five. Keen to. 
Well, that means keen. Needs to mean a bite. I don't like that. A cut above, acute. If something's acute, it's keen. That's better. So a cut above is certainly, that's that's probably more synonymous with something being superior of a, of a very high quality than a bit above. So a cut above. Let's try 23 down. One's being very slow to accumulate. Must be a mass, surely. One's being very slow. Okay, I think what's happening here, if you're being very slow, you are an ass. A double S as in a donkey. So one's being am ass. One's being very slow. I am an ass. <laughs> it's, it's almost deserving of a question mark that, but to accumulate is to amass. Now, can we get this one? Demanding somewhat faster news. Ha <laughs> ha, okay. Now, there's almost always one of these in every Times crossword. When you're starting out, always look out for it. We found it right at the end of the acrosses, or nearly right at the end of the acrosses, and it's a hidden one where the answer is actually spelled out in the clue. And if we take somewhat, um, so look at the phrase faster news, and you take somewhat of that phrase, you take pieces of a piece of it, you can cut consecutively S-T-E-R-N out, out of the phrase. And stern, if something is a stern, it is demanding. So now what's this? Execute. First move. No, it might not be actually. First movement outside of prisoner. Oh, prelude. Yes. So the outside of the word prelude, prisoner is PR. Uh, leading a word that means to escape. Well, to elude is to escape. And we get prelude, which means the first movement of a musical piece. And is this dope then? <laughs> ah, yes. So dope is intelligence. If you if you tell someone the dope, you're giving them the, the lowdown. And if you do PE, you are doing for exercise. So there we go. We have finished it. Um, very nice puzzle. It is not pangrammatic, is it? I'm just seeing the J and all these W's, but I don't think we saw a Z or a Q. Not seeing it. It might be there. Uh, anyway, let's submit it and check that we haven't got it wrong. I'll submit without leaderboard because obviously I'm not racing. Let's hope it's right. Oh, that is right, isn't it? Okay, that, that strange coloured J is just because that's where the cursor is, I think. I mean, jealousy can't be wrong. Um, and we were going to look a lot of things up. So let's, let's start with Wick, actually, for band bringing fuel. Is... Th twisted threads of cotton which draw up the inflammable liquid to the flame any strip of material uh, okay a strip of material might be a band of material i think strip and band are probably synonymous let's just see band's got all these me a flat strip yeah okay i just wouldn't think of it in that way uh catch we could justify Bad blood we justified. Assam, hamburger, blender, litotes we've already looked at. Oldie worldie, is that actually in there? I bet it is. Oldie world. I'm trying to. Oh, oh there it is. Oldie worldie. You would you'd look at the pronunciation guide. It is oldie worldie. <laughs> uh, Self consciously imitative of the past or supposed past. Um, a new we looked at, dope, dope we understood in the end. Oh, let's look at Alembic. And I'm expecting to say a, a still. Yeah, an old fashioned type of distilling apparatus. Isn't that ludicrous? Sorry about that one. That's, that's just absolutely crazy. Um, silence we understood, a cut above we understood. Untie we understood. I mean, I think the word plays slightly stretched or sort of the definition is a slightly stretched there spray on we got west end was tend wasn't it, it was tend around s that's fine come down's fine leha we looked at wimbledon led on that was fine we looked we looked extensively at the deer there was another one i wanted to look up 
I know there was. I can't remember. Oh, it was, it was Duns, wasn't it? Let's go and have a look at Duns. A Dun. So Dun colour. Okay, well, it's not. It doesn't list it as an old word, but really, I mean, who uses this nowadays? Somebody who duns a demand for payment. Well, okay. Also, a hill or a fortified mound. Um, so that's 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 why that one was what it was. What a great puzzle, hey! I was a lot. I really like that puzzle. I mean, there were a couple of moments that I don't quite get the wordplay. But in general, it was of superb quality. And these are the ones I hope we get on Fridays. <laughs> I love puzzles like this. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. If you want to see Mark, Mark blitz this, get over to Patreon now. We'll be back later with more Sudoku-like editions of Cracking the Cryptic.